Hello, hello, what's up, all four people here tonight? I decided to come on tonight because we did, uh, or I did, a we did a little podcast over on Audioholics tonight, and I woke up at like six o'clock this evening, so this is like my afternoon right now. <laughs> but I get it; it's like four o'clock in the morning. It's 4 a.m. over here in the East Coast. I'm surprised to see some of you guys up already. Up so early. Unless you're in unless you're in like Australia or something like that. What we got here? I got OLED Kingdom. What's up, OLED Kingdom? In Flames Rocks. Mr. Flames Rocks. I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna be nice tonight. I'm not gonna use any profanity tonight and go go off on any rants tonight. I'm gonna try to keep it civil. <clears throat> That's what we're gonna do today. There's a Kyle. Kyle's up at one o'clock or sorry, four o'clock. On the East Coast too. So what is going on today? I don't know what we're talking about today. 88 inch 8k don't have listen that wasn't the my that's not my tv okay i'm not that crazy i don't have that much money i can't afford 88 inch 8k i could get it here for review but then i would have to like get a really big truck to pick it up and bring it to my house there's one thing that i hate doing is tv reviews because the boxes are so big and they just take up so much space. But people do love TV reviews, though. For whatever reason, they love TV reviews more than home theater reviews. More than more than AV receiver reviews and speaker reviews. <laughs> I think uh, I think for 2021, I think LG is going to be uh, doing their little press conference thing for CES. I think next week, first week of January. So, I think there's. I think they're going to announce some micro LEDs or mini LEDs or something like that. I think that's that's what I was told. I don't know if that's going to be coming to fruition, but I'm thinking if that's if that's the case, then I might get one of those in, like for myself to get rid of my my 75 inch Sony. So that that's on my agenda. Or if there's more, you know, a nice affordable 8K some kind of display with workable hdmi 2.1 then maybe i will uh maybe i will get one of those in to be my living room tv we shall see we'll see what next what next week brings you know what i did i got this is what i got i got the new uh i got the new lg projector though I got this bad boy in. I've been playing with this for the past couple days. I think I talked about it last time, but I'll talk about it again today. So I got this in. I've been using this in my home theater for a little bit. And this is a, it's an upscaling projector. So it'll give you like 8 million pixels. So it'll give you a 3840 by 2160 res. But it's also... 2700 ANSI lumens like so this thing is like a light cannon boy this thing is bright my JVC is only 1900 ANSI lumens this one's 2700 it is noticeably brighter kind of makes me wish I had uh kind of makes me wish I had that Sony laser projector just so I can have it for like comparison because like HDR on this thing is like crazy bright it's like looking at a TV. It's like looking at a QLED. <laughs> but at like 100 and some 20 inches. So it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. And it's got... It's got uh, HDMI 2.1. But... It, it only has... Automatic low latency mode. It doesn't have variable refresh rate. 
which I think would be useful for the Xbox, if I'm not mistaken. It says, uh, where does it say that? It's also not 48 gigabits either. It's only 20, 24, so it's like half. It's only like half of uh, HDMI 2.1's specified spec. Yo, did they move that? I feel like uh, it was here like just the other day. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, do, 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 do. Not only do it give you option to watch DVD, Blu-ray, including 3D, 4D plus features like that. Wait, so is this thing 3D? Blu-ray players not only do players give you the option to watch DVDs, including 3D and 4K Blu-rays. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to check that. I don't think there was a 3D option on that. I'm going to double check when I get off this. Because that would be cool. It doesn't state anywhere it does 3D. But yeah, man, yo, this is a... Uh, I got this. I'm working on the review now. But I can't... It's not officially out yet. I don't think they're going to announce it till next week. So it's like I can't even... I can't even do a video on it. Or even talk about how much it costs. So, uh, you'll be on the lookout for that. Great colors, too. Awesome colors. Black levels, not that great. Unless you put it into, like, dark room mode. There's also, like, filmmaker mode, which shuts off all the processing. It gives you more of a cinematic look to it. But it's still DLP. It does have a DLP look. That, that crisp, kind of almost digital look. Whereas, like, the JVC has that film look I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about but hard to explain I guess if you've ever been to like a DLP cinema home theater or no home theater movie theater you know some some DLP cinemas have that kind of digital look if you're sitting close enough to it you can almost see the pixels this has kind of the same look which I don't mind I just kind of wish it was full 4k because it does come it does look a little shy of being native 4K. It's pretty close to native 4K. But it is a little bit soft though. So it doesn't have the, the, the super finest detail. Although if you didn't have a native 4K projector, you would think this is amazing. Which it is. It's a great looking projector. So be on the lookout for that. I put up uh, I put up that post on the community tab. And... Uh, I put up a link to my Instagram because I didn't put the model number on it. <laughs> I think somebody was pissed off. Somebody was pissed off because I didn't put that on the model number of what it was. I was like, yo, just click the link to my Instagram. You can you can uh, check out the model number there. Let me share this. Let me share this on... Let me share this link on Spirit Change. Let's see if anybody else is awake. Uh, switch. Maybe not like the best idea to come and do a stream at 8 in the morning, 4 in the morning. Dashboard. Let's make a new post. Go to community tab. Make chat. There we go. There we go. Do you think any new Blu-ray players will be announced at CES or the Panasonic ones are the best we will get? I don't... I'm trying to think. Would there be any need for a new Blu-ray player? It's already been like two years, right? Was it two or three years that we got a new player? Um, Maybe LG? I think their, their last players were kind of flimsy. I think Sony's play, f flagship is still like the 800 Mark II. So, I mean, really, really, there's nothing, there's nothing new out, you know what I mean? As far as, like, Blu-ray, Blu-ray player-wise, like, I don't know what else they're going to do. I mean, the Panasonic will still be the best one. I don't see Panasonic releasing any new players either. It might be just at that time, you know what I mean? Like... Players are so good right now. Uh, at least the Panasonic ones are so good. 
LG should at least release a new player because that that one they got was kind of garbage. <laughs> it's kind of well, I don't feel like it's garbage. It feels really cheap though. Like it doesn't feel as premium as their TVs are. That player, just not a premium player. I don't even know why they would drop that. But I would think Panasonic would probably still keep their their flagship player. Because I think the UB900 was the flagship player for a few years. And the 9000 is only going on two years now. So I, I wouldn't expect anything from Panasonic. Likely from LG though. Plus Sony, Sony just came out with the uh, PlayStation 5. So it's like, do they, do they really need to come out with another 4K player? Are there any 4K projectors out there? There are no 4K projectors. There's just the JVC NX9, which is an upscaling 4K or 8K projector. That's it, though. There's no native 8K projectors. I hope uh, JVC releases some new models this year, because I think we're going on three years now, maybe two and a half, three years, for the 7, 5, 7, and 9. So we'll see what the CES, the online CES brings. Let me switch back over. Watch any good movies recently? I, not really, I don't watch any. Actually, no, I saw Soul. I watched Soul the other night. The, I want to say I watched first, well, first I watched Wonder Woman 84, and then I watched Soul right after that, and Wonder Woman 84 seemed like it was a four-hour movie. Felt like I was watching Lord of the Rings, it was like so long, and the pacing was really slow on it. It was just like a lot of, a lot of dead space, like it seemed to drag on. I was watching it with my wife. She's like, why aren't you paying attention? She's like, stop using your phone. I was like, dude, I was like, yo, this is a boring movie. I was like, isn't this a bad movie? Or is it just me? And my wife loves, she likes Wonder Woman. She's like, no, it's not really that good. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, disappointed in Wonder Woman. But then after that, we watched Soul, and that was all right, I guess. I don't know. That's all right. Maybe because I was a half asleep after Wonder Woman, I didn't really get into it that much. I was going to do a review. Like, I started taking some notes, but then I think I dozed off in the middle of it and I woke up towards the end. So, I'm going to have to go back sometime and uh, maybe maybe today I'll go back and try to rewatch it and maybe I'll do a review for it. But that movie's got some pretty good Atmos uh, using the Disney Plus app. It was a um, welcome change coming from. Wonder Woman, which had no Atmos, like legit, there was like no Atmos in it. There was, there was, I think in my review, there was that part where she's in the White House, she's flinging the lasso. That was for like two seconds. Uh, there was one helicopter flyover. That was like another two seconds. There was a part uh, where she's underneath the truck during the highway. I think there might have been three or four shots, where it was like two seconds each. And uh, I think that's it, man. I think that's the only time, maybe those three, four times were the only times that I saw the height speakers, that the height speakers were active. Other than that, them top speakers were just quiet. And in the bottom, the lower speakers were quiet too. I mean, there was music in the bottom speakers, but there wasn't really like, like too many like effects happening in the back speakers or the side speakers. It was just mostly like music. So that was a that was a bummer because I was amped up to watch that. Like I was, uh, I was waiting all week. Had my alarm set up. I woke up at woke up at eleven thirty. We made the popcorn. We got the uh, we got the candy rack all fully stocked. Had me some had me some Mike sour Mike and Ike's popcorn with the white cheddar with the white cheddar seasoning on it and the IMAX. The IMAX scene opened up, and that was cool. But the rest of the movie, man, it was just bad. 
I don't even know what Cheetah was doing. I feel like they put Cheetah in the movie just so Wonder Woman could have somebody to fight. Because, like, what else she was going to do? She wasn't going to fight uh, Pedro Pascal. Like, what's he, what was he going to do? Like, wish her to death? So, like, the whole Cheetah fight was, like, really... It was really short, and it was very anticlimactic. I mean, like, that whole movie, man. The whole movie is just a drag. And then on top of that, like, the sound, the sound was, like, pure garbage. It was just fucking bad, man. Damn. I was, I, not like I was the biggest fan of the, of the first movie, but this was just, like, worse. I mean, come on. Let me see if I can bring that up here. Whoops. My bad. Let me not make that so big, huh? I uh, probably can't show that, can I? <laughs> I'd play the uh, I'd play the movie here, but I last time I I played Tenet, I got shut down. That whole stream I did with Tenet, they just blocked it like nobody could watch it. <laughs> this is fucking sad. Let me see if I can like bring up clips or anything. Man, I can't even bring up clips. Um, da, 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 da. So that's it, man. Oh, other than Wonder Woman and Soul, I'm going to do the review for Love and Monsters today. So Love and Monsters is going to go up probably sometime today. Probably after I get up, get off this. Well, it's like 4 a.m., so I don't want to watch anything so early in the morning. So I'm probably going to do that review. That'll probably be up. Probably around six o'clock, eight o'clock later tonight. I gotta rewatch that. Take some notes on that. And that one only has a seven point one mix. I don't know why it's not an Atmos because it's it would be a really good Atmos mix. Because there's some good action in it. Let me see if I can bring that up here. Oops. Love and Monsters. I think the Blu-ray, I think the 4K is only 10 bucks. Is it 10 bucks? Oh man, she says $27. I thought it was $10. All right, well, because it's 27 bucks. But this is, uh, yeah, man. I'm going to drop this later today. Fun movie. Probably, this is like the... This is the best streaming movie I think I've watched since COVID hit. Like big, big Hollywood kind of blockbuster-esque movie. I know it's not a blockbuster movie, but I feel like I, I feel like I've I've said this multiple times already. But like the the best movie that I've watched that was kind of like skipped the theater and went straight to digital. Love and Monsters must watch, and if you are a HDR lover, like that crisp 4k look this is one of those movies it would probably be on my top 10 for 2021 list but there's no atmos so i can't put it on the top 10 list it's like off the list it would be likely a honorable mention though at some point in time i do feel and it's a fun movie like i hope they come out with a part two I hope they have a part two. What says Joe Walden cringe wise is on par with the Imagine? Oh yeah, the Imagine video where she's singing. Yeah, listen, I'm not even a fan of her being Wonder Woman. I feel like she's like way too skinny. I feel like I've always thought Wonder Woman was supposed to be a little bit more buff, like Gina Carano buff. That's that would have been like an awesome Wonder Woman. I mean, Gina Carano was Wonder Woman. Like she looked like an Amazon. <laughs> Tenet is leagues better than Wonder Woman IMAX shots are great yeah man the IMAX stuff was good on Wonder Woman like they were clean look at that let's see if we can bring that up let me see if I can show that without getting in trouble oops screen one nope application 
Look at that. Look at that. Look how clean that is, huh? That's a clean looking shot right there. That's a full screen. That's the IMAX shot in Wonder Woman 84. I would think that the physical is not going to be drastically different either, especially sound wise. I think there, I think there were some folks that was like, it's going to be the Atmos is going to be way better in the sound department on physical media. I'm like, no, it's definitely not going to be that much different. It's going to sound very much the same. Uh, bah, bah, bah. That's it, da, da. Hold on. And then, but then there's, there is a good amount of grain and everything here. You know, it's got that. You get up. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Probably not. It's only 720p in, on YouTube, but good amount of grain in it. It's uh, not razor sharp, of course. I'm gonna say it's a little better, a little better looking than a regular Blu-ray. But uh, not, not, not demo worthy stuff. It looks just as good as the the first one, as the first Wonder Woman. More colors for sure. You know what did bum me about Wonder Woman was it took place in the '80s, but I don't I don't think I recall hearing any '80s music in it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't play any. Like 80s music, there was like no Corey Hart or AHA or Bon Jovi or anything like that. I mean, there was, I don't think they played any 80s music. Like I was expecting like this uh, Strangers Thing, you know, type of thing. Like was the last season, uh, season three, where they, it was like all oh, 80s music in it, 80s inspired. Like I was hoping to get some of that in Wonder Woman 84, but it was just uh, Hans Zimmer. And I don't know if you if you watched eighty four, but there was that little piece of music towards the end of the movie where they played the same music that was in BVS. It's also in Wonder Woman too, so I did like that little callback. I don't know if you guys have caught did catch that or not, but I caught it. I was like, oh shit! I was like, this is the part where I think Superman dies. They're they're playing that melancholy music, and they were playing the same music here in this. So that was a nice little, that was a nice surprise. Unfortunately, this just wasn't as good as BVS. And speaking of BVS, they're going to come out. There's going to be a Snyder cut version, like a new version of BVS, where it's going to be in 4x3. I think the whole thing is going to be an IMAX. So we're going to get like a 4x3 version of Batman vs. Superman. That's the word. I don't think it's gonna be any new new footage, but that's what I that's what I read, that's what I heard online on the YouTube's. What else we got? Yesterday I got my new home theater set up, Polk fifty five thirty five fifteen with the thirty six hundred H. Later we'll buy the rest for seven one four. Really excited! Congrats, man! I see this guy's uh, avatar all the time. I'm not sure what I'm looking at though. Oh, that's the uh, God of War eye. Okay. For some reason, I I was looking at your little picture. I thought it was like the cat in a hat. <laughs> For some reason, I thought it was a cat in a hat. But I think it's the uh, the God of War. Am I correct? I enjoyed the 35 millimeter filmic look, though. Better than DNR Lord of the Rings. See, if Lord of the Rings... If Lord of the Rings looked the way that Wonder Woman 84 did... I would I would definitely have done the review on it. But it Lord of the Rings looked like Terminator 2 and Forrest Gump together. And it didn't look anything like Wonder Woman. I mean if they would have just kept that film grain intact, it would have been like a way, way better looking way better looking movie. Way better looking trilogy of movies. Damn, they fucked it up, man. I just read that one. Have you seen the Harry Potter 4K Blu-rays? Yes, I did see the Harry Potter 4K Blu-rays. For some reason, I think I did them, but I, I don't think I did. I think maybe I did like one of them, or maybe it was the maybe it was the other one with the with the English guy in it. 
Fantastic Beasts. I think I think I did those ones. I didn't. Maybe I didn't do Harry Potter. Listen, even Harry Potter looks better than the Lord of the Rings. I don't think I kept them though. I think I sold them off because I'm a Harry Potter fan. Harry Potter is right there with. Harry Potter for me is in the same category as Lord of the Rings. If there's a movie I want to, there's a movie I want to throw in, so I can fall asleep. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, gets it done every time. Put me right off. I don't even have to take sleeping pills. I don't even have to drink a beer. I could just watch Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. My message just uh, knocks me right out. Yeah, no really 80s soundtrack either. Yeah, that's what I thought. No 80s music in that. <coughs> Tony O, the boss, got the full box set. Haven't seen any reviews. You haven't seen any reviews on Harry Potter? Dude, I think there's... I believe there's a ton of Harry Potter reviews. Are you kidding me? Maybe not of mine, but... Not, a, not for me, but I know there's a bunch, though. Harry Potter is right there, you know, right there with Lord of the Rings for popularity. What do you think of Title? I love Title. Title and Koba is my my two go tos. I've been using. Well, you probably know. I mean, I, I did the uh, I did the uh, interview with the Rune guys on the channel, and it works with Koba and Title. If you haven't tried it, try it out. It's like. I think there's like a 60 day trial of Rune. You know, if you're a Rune user, if you're even, I don't know if your equipment is compatible, but if it is, then try and check out Rune, R O O N. It's like a music aggregation service, artwork, gives you lyrics and stuff like that. It's uh, pretty cool. Highly recommend it. A little pricey, but I do highly recommend it. The haters are coming. Do we, do we have haters? No, we don't have any haters in the chat today. All 17 new guys seem pretty nice. Good eye from down under. Alan Ahmet. What's up, mate? What time is it over there? Probably 2. <laughs> is it, was it 4.30 in the afternoon over there? I'm not sure if that's Australian or if that's from the UK, but <laughs> I'll just roll with it. Uh, Peaklonk C20. What is my favorite movie of the year? What would be my favorite movie of 2020? Ah, man, I don't know. I'm trying to think, what's a good movie that I've seen? Yeah, I've seen so many movies. Nothing really sticks out in my brain. The Love of Monsters is a fun movie. I keep talking, I keep thinking about that Love of Monsters movie that I've seen. Fat Man was good too. Fat Man was really good. I was a little surprised how good that was. Fat Man was a good movie. Lord, Love and Monsters was a good, fun movie. Uh, probably best TV show, Be the Mandalorian. I can't think of anything on top of my head that was, like, really good. Let me see here. Let me look at my list of stuff that I did. Top to, oh, you know what? Midway was, yeah, was Midway good? You know, Tenet, Tenet has been uh, Tenet has been climbing my list of movies. I thought that was my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie. But I did watch it like five, six times already. And it grows. It's been grown on my list of favorite Christopher Nolan movies. You know, despite the whole dialogue thing. Um, I've been becoming a bigger fan of that movie. It's no longer my second least favorite. I think uh, Inception is still my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. If, you know, I'm looking at the list of all the 4Ks I did this year. Like, everything is a catalog title. Mulan. That wasn't that good. It looked really good, but it didn't sound that great, but it did look really good, though. There's, there's been, like, no new movies that came out this year. Holy crap. Hamilton? No. Dude, everything... Everything I did this year was all catalog stuff. Wow. I think that's why... Mm, 
Sonic. Sonic kind of sucked. Birds of Prey definitely sucked. Call of the Wild. Wild. That kind of, that story kind of sucked too. Underwater was a good movie. That came out this year, right? That that was a... I would have to say... Man, I really wish Underwater was an Atmos because that would have rocked. If there's a movie that's going to rival... That's going to rival Tenet for Big Bass, Underwater would be number two. Because Underwater has a tremendous amount of LFE. Just like a shit ton. Uh, Bad Boys 3? No. Dude, I'm going to have to say Tenet and Underwater, probably. My two favorite movies I've seen this year. 1917 was kind of boring. Jumanji was kind of boring. Charlie's Angels was boring. Knives Out was alright. Midway kind of sucked. Ford v. Ferrari, that's a good one though. Not a movie I'd rewatch multiple times. It was still good though. Terminator sucked. Gemini Man sucked. Dude, there's like nothing but shit. All these movies came out shitty. Well, we got Joker. Alright, so... Probably the best movie this year uh, that I would watch multiple times over. I would have to say... I would have to say... Man, listen. I would have to say... Joker... It would have to be Joker, Underwater, Love and Monsters. My three favorite movies I've seen this year. And Ford v. Ferrari. Alright, so four movies right there. Those are my favorite movies I've seen this year. All the rest were shit. <laughs> Pretty much all the movies on my top ten list, all shitty. <laughs> all shitty movies. Ten, ten is no longer shitty. I thought ten it was shitty, but it's no longer shitty anymore. What is this? You hear about the Mandalorian delay... I hear that they're going to do the Boba Fett show first. The Book of Boba Fett. Then I think the Mandalorian Season 3 is going to come after that. That's what I heard. Oh, it's E3 in Australia. That is a 14-hour difference? What do you think about the Ben Q2700 projector? I can't really say, man. I haven't used it. I mean, if it's a DLP, I'm sure it's a decent one. How much is that, anyways? Let's see. I'm sure it's one of those upscaling. I've been trying to hit up BenQ forever. They just don't want to send me any projectors. I don't know why. Oh, 20. Is that a really old one? 27? You could BenQ 2050. 800. Man, it's not even coming up on uh that's not even coming up on the Amazon here. Hmm. Oh. That's the twenty seven hundred monitor. Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean I can't really say. I mean they got they have they make good budget projectors. I will say that. Why does HBO Max Disney Plus and Netflix is capped at Dolby Digital Plus Atmos? And why not true HD Atmos? Is that a streaming limitation? Well, I know that with eARC, they could transmit uh, lossless, but I don't think uh, I don't think anybody's doing that. I do not believe it. They're they're. I don't believe any of their anybody's streaming lossless Atmos at all. So, hopefully, that changes with uh, eARC being compatible. Pretty much anything from like 2021 on. 2020 on up, right? Was it 2019 and above? We started seeing e eARC. So I don't know why. That might be a good question to ask. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody I can get on to talk about that with. But I don't think anybody from Netflix would want to come on and talk. Come on a channel. But it could very well pass lossless audio they just they just don't 
So Fred, you ever watched the Raid Redemption one and two? If not, give those a shot. I watched the uh, the I watched the Raid one, which I think uh, Dread was based upon. I did not watch I did not watch the Raid two though, but I did watch one and I really liked it. And I also like Dread as well. Dread in three D. I don't know if they're in 4K or not, are they? I don't think so. Maybe they are. <coughs> Have you checked out The Sound of Metal on Prime? Really cool sound mix and great movie. I have not seen The Sound Metal. Let's see, what does that even look like? Sound of Metal? Since we're on Amazon right now. It doesn't even sound familiar. Oh, that's what the uh, the guy from from the uh, One Direction. Wait, is that the guy from One Direction? Or is that Ms. Uh, Rizumet or whatever? Yeah, Rizumet. That's it. Never mind. I thought that was the I thought that was the uh, One Direction guy. It's four K. He's not in Atmos. Is it in Atmos? Like I would watch, I would like to watch Amazon Prime movies in Atmos, but I have no idea what. Uh, I don't even know if Amazon has Atmos, do they? Who has Atmos for Amazon Prime? And what are you using for Atmos and Amazon Prime? Because Apple TV doesn't do it. I feel like I feel like a lot of these Amazon originals would be in Atmos, but I haven't seen any any place any device that I can. Well, maybe the Fire Stick would have it. I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out though. I did see the trailers for it. It did look kind of interesting. But I wish it wasn't at most though. We could talk about this. We spoke about this earlier with uh, Gene on his channel. This is... I don't know if you guys came from that... Came from uh, Audioholics or not earlier today. Well, we spoke about this really quick. Logitech discontinues Harmony Remotes. Evidence is mounting that Logitech may discontinue the Harmony remote arm of their business. Users on Reddit have reported that their orders have been canceled and that they have been told by retailers that Logitech is permanently ceasing production of Harmony remotes. Logitech has responded saying, Please be informed that we are continuing to manufacture support of Harmony. The stock level is likely due to distribution and logistics, but customer support is not able to confirm. So I don't know, man. Is this all about the pandemic? Maybe not being able to supply, you know, parts for these Harmony remotes or what? Like, uh, I guess everybody's saying that they can't get any of these remotes. I mean, has any of you guys recently bought a Harmony remote? Recently? And then, of course, they go on to give some other options in case it is true that Harmony is no longer making remotes, which is the Sofa Baton U1, 50 bucks. I saw some videos on that. It looks like kind of a crappy remote, but I don't know if you guys have used it. Roomy Remote. This is what I use, actually. Awesome remote control. The Home Remote and the Neo Remote by Control 4, 600 bucks. Um, I've heard about this. I haven't heard about that. But I do use this. I have been using this for the past three, four months now. And if you need to add like an IR, if you have like a Harmony Hub, you can use that with Roomy Remote to send out IR, IR <clears throat> commands. Otherwise, everything works through... It works through... This is it right here. It works through IP. So any of your devices that that can be that's hooked up to your network that has an IP address, Roomy Remote can pick up on it and you can give it, you know, like macro commands, turn on the lights, you know. Turn on the lights, set your inputs correctly and all that good stuff. You know, same the same as you can do with like the the Harmony, except it's a bit more reliable because it's done through IP, so there's like no missed 
no missed commands that uh, the hub's not hitting or the remote's not hitting. So you don't have to go back and usually redo it. So check that out. This is, uh, this is legit news that that Logitech's going to stop making remote controls. I've got, you know, I got a buddy that works at Best Buy, but he hasn't, he hasn't told me that they haven't been getting remote controls in to the, to the Best Buy stores that he's at. So that would be kind of interesting if that is the case. And then like, what, what are really going to be your, what's really going to be like a reliable alternative to, to the universal remote? That kind of like Harmony has got that got that market kind of cornered for you know enthusiasts because because if you have like a control four if you have a savant system that's those are not that's not something that you could you know just keep adding new devices if you get a new apple tv a new roku or fire stick you usually have to call up your your integrator or your installer to have them add new devices every time you get something new in whereas with the harmony you just open up the app and just add it yourself so I don't think there's anything else out there that's, you know, super easy to use as the Harmony was. So it'd be kind of bad, kind of sad news if Harmony goes away. Because it's the most user-friendly remote that I can think of that's not like an app-based. But what are your thoughts on Harmony leaving the market? Do you think it's true? Do any of you guys work in retail? Do you have any inside knowledge of Harmony leaving the remote control business if so leave a comment down below and let us know what's going on with harmony and what are your alternatives to using harmony i'll be sure to clip that out and put on spare change <clears throat> jack ryan is the only amazon prime show that has atmos really that seems weird that seems weird you know what is a good amazon show is uh Upload. I think it's download or upload. Let me see. I think it's upload. Upload season one. I love this show. It's got uh, one of the ML brothers, Ro Robbie ML. Uh, you know, Arrow's little brother. This was a. I binged this all in like one shot. Like I didn't know, but I saw the trailer and it looked like he's in a. Like in a video game, I guess, or something. Oh no, he's not in a video game. I guess you die, then you you take your consciousness and upload it to a virtual world, <laughs> but then you still, but then you still gotta pay for everything you do in the game. Or it's not even a game in the in the virtual world that he's in. Uh, super, uh, really fucking good show. Like I really enjoyed it. I hope they come out with a season two because I thought it was really original. I mean, they have to have a season two because they kind of left it as a cliffhanger. But if you guys haven't checked that out, check that out. And if this is in Atmos, I think it'd be kind of a fun show to listen to Atmos if it if it is in Atmos. Good show though. Check it out, man. I think you'll like it. Good comedy. Good funny show. How many episodes are in that? There's like eight episodes or something. Ten episodes, my bad. Ten episodes of that. Upload. Amazon Prime. Do it. And of course the boys. Hopefully they come out with a new boys show. 2021 year of Dune and Matrix 4. Yep. We're not going to get that on HBO Max. Because Warner Brothers caved in. They didn't want to get sued. They're like, okay. I hope we still get Godzilla. I think we're still getting Godzilla and Kong on HBO Max. If that sound, if that Atmos is anything like Skull Island and King of the Monsters, oof. That's going to be good. You, damn. Hold on. Did Godzilla come out this year? Or was that last year? Man, if that, if that was this year, then I feel like that should have probably been on my top 10 list. Damn. I think, I think it might have been 2019, though. I don't know why everyone liked Uncut Gems. I thought it was horrible. Do you remember that scene where the where his uh, little it was his assistant 
came to the house. She was wearing that. She was wearing that little, uh, you know, little lingerie there. Damn, that was a good scene right there. I liked the movie though. I thought it was a decent movie. Kind of, kind of messed up ending, but I thought it was still kind of good. Definitely a different role that we're not used to seeing Adam Sandler playing. Not like that uh, Hubie. Was it Hubie Halloween? <laughs> Which I which actually I thought Hubie Halloween was actually pretty good too. It was funny. I thought it was funny. Like stupid funny. Would you recommend waiting for the new batch of 4K projectors into the new year or buy what is available now? Well, I think Sony's projectors are what they are gonna be. I think the only thing new you're probably gonna have to look forward to is possibly JVC. And then, and then, if you want, uh, you know, like a DLP projector, upscaling projector, then then I would wait to see what LG's got and maybe BenQ. But Epson's already released their new models. Sony released their new models. Um, I mean, you can already see the. I, I already have one of the LGs. I got an LG here. I think there's. They have like two models coming out. Samsung's already showed off their upscaling ultra short throws. And which only just leaves, basically just leaves JVC with whatever new models they're coming out with. If they're if they're going to come out with a new model, if they don't, then you must just buy yourself a JVC. I guess that would uh, depend on how much money you want to spend too. So I don't know how much more, what your budget would be. But um, best image quality though, JVC for sure. Best contrast and black levels. Definitely better than the Sony. No doubt about that. Oh, what else we got here? Have you watched IP Man? They got released on 4K recently. The movie is great. I have not seen any of the IP Man movies. I did. I think Adam from Movie Guy 365, I think he's got a copy of that in. So I think he's probably going to do that review. He's probably doing it today. I mean, he does one every day. So I would assume he's going to do it today. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, what else we got? Anything else? Any other questions here before I log off? No really cues? All right. I get it. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning here. I'm actually getting a little, I'm actually getting a little tired of myself. But all right, guys. I'm, I'm going to log off here. You know, thanks for hanging out. It's so, so early in the morning here. Be on the lookout for the next stream. I don't know when that's going to be yet, but thanks for staying up. I'll see you in the